My name is George. <laughs> I am really grateful for this opportunity to commemorate the life of an extraordinary American and a friend, Rich DeVos. Rich befriended many presidents over the years, and one I know quite well. You call him 41, I call him dad, since his love to the DeVos family. As does Laura. Sadly, she can't be here today, but she wanted me to make sure that I pass on her love as well. Rich was first and foremost a family man, and so I am pleased to be with his beloved children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Of course, we don't really honor Rich without remembering your matriarch and the love of his life, Helen. And so I join you in giving thanks for their long lives and their remarkable marriage. Despite our age difference, Rich and I had some things in common. We both gave speeches around the world, though I don't think he mangled the English language as often as I did. <laughs> I was known as a compassionate conservative. He was the compassionate capitalist. Perhaps above all, we share a love of freedom. Rich once said, I've always loved my country and consider myself a patriot. However, I've been criticized for speaking out so enthusiastically about freedom, free enterprise, and love of country. Something else we had in common. I appreciate the DeVos family, one of the great American families, for inviting me to reflect on Rich's love of freedom, his belief in the universal value of human freedom, and his recognition of the responsibilities that come with freedom. In preparing um, these remarks, I look back at my second inaugural address, decades ago, it seemed like. <laughs> Here's what I said, America has a need of idealism and courage because we have essential work at home, the unfinished work of American freedom. In America's ideal of freedom, citizens find the dignity and security of economic independence instead of laboring on the edge of subsistence. In America's ideal of freedom, the public interest depends on private character, on integrity, and tolerance toward others, and the rule of conscience in our own lives. Our nation relies on men and women who look after a neighbor and surround the lost with love. I went on to ask, did our generation advance the cause of freedom? And did our character bring credit to that cause? Well, if this is the standard of good citizenship, Rich DeVos was gold. You have to wonder, where did that wellspring of freedom come from? Well, here's what he said. He said he credited his upbringing here in Grand Rapids. Rich was born to Dutch immigrants who were lured to liberty and the possibility of our country. He's a child of the Great Depression. His father lost his job, their family lost their house, but they never lost hopefulness. Rich's family was always steadfast in their belief in the promise of America. And so after World War II, Rich and J. Van Andel came up with a novel idea based on that promise. When we thought about owning our own business, Rich wrote, we thought the opportunity to do so was fundamental to America. We thought everyone who wanted to should be able to own their own business. My belief in free enterprise and my defense of free enterprise as the greatest economic engine the world has ever known was born out daily as we watched our little business grow. He went on to say, a vacant floodplain in a tiny rural village began to rapidly sprout manufacturing plants, warehouses, and offices. Here was the overwhelming evidence of the power of free enterprise, something that even all my speeches and writings could never measure up to, what today is the Amway World Headquarters. 
As Amway grew, Rich always held firm in his conviction that our country must at all costs maintain and defend our freedoms. Rich believed in free and open societies ordered by moral conviction and compassionate government. He believed in the economies that reward effort, communities that protect the weak, and the duties of nations to respect the dignity and rights of all. And he recognized that the desire of freedom is not a uniquely American value, but the inborn hope of all humanity. So Rich went around the world, in his words, selling America, promoting free enterprise, personal responsibility, and opportunity for all. And there was no finer salesman for American values than Rich DeVos. I remember visiting an Amway conference in China. A few years ago, the arena was filled with thousands of successful Amway entrepreneurs who were realizing the blessings and benefits of economic freedom. In selling America, Rich was really selling freedom for all and empowering people around the world. Rich understood that the gift of freedom came with responsibilities. He became not only a leader in business, but a leader in this community, in the church, and in our country. He always helped those who were less fortunate. The Gospel of Luke reminds us that of those whom much has been given, much shall be required. Rich lived out the Gospel on a daily basis. I listened to Rich selling America speech this week and was struck by the power of this passage. We believe and have always believed in this country that man was created in the image of God and given talents and responsibilities and was instructed to use them to make this world a better place in which to live. And you see, this is really the great thing of America. He went on to say this is where it contrasts with everything that other godless societies attempt to do. Because you see, at heart, we believe that man was created. And in him is a living spirit. That he's not just a bunch of dirt and clay put together by, for a few years until we bury him. But that he has a greater depth and responsibilities in that. And that is why we respect each other. And that is why we care for each other. And that is why we stand together and give thanks for the things we enjoy. Rich certainly was more than a bunch of dirt and clay. He had greater depth. He recognized his greater responsibilities. And that is why we stand together today and give thanks for Rich DeVos. His life is a testament to the promise of America and the blessings of freedom. We will miss him. And we will remember his life. And as we do so, we rejoice in his heavenly reunion with Helen and their audience with the Almighty. God bless.